August 2021. I was walking through this phenomenal trek near the outskirts of Pune. And this was the first time that I visited this sensational city. Mountains, trees, beautiful climate, walking through the terrains made me realize how fortunate we are to be born in this beautiful country where greenery guides us towards bliss. It was a climb. Rocks, terrains, grasses, boulders, all naturally built. That's how Mother Earth is, perhaps. Have you ever wondered why do we feel the sense of euphoria with nature? Why do we always go back to our roots unconsciously and by default enjoy every bit of it? Now, that was my first ever trek in my life. My first ever interaction with nature at such close proximity and intimacy where I found out the answers to all my questions. Who were there? Well, my friends and family, many of which are here right now as they're listening to me. But we woke up late. My dear family, you know how it is. We're meeting for the first time and all. The climb seemed pretty small. We were not really sure what's in store for us. And we somehow we began. A huge fort awaiting us. The first few stairs as we moved up introduced us to the tribal culture of the entire place. There were storekeepers, there were tribal people, they were selling lemon water, vada pao, normal water, and all these different various refreshments. Now, we asked a few professional mountaineers, sir, 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 how much time does it take to go up and come down? Only 30 minutes. Guess what? Even after four hours, it still turned out to be 30 minutes. Anyways, we reached our first pinnacle, the first stop. And as we turned back, we witnessed this beautiful greenery all around. Mountains, mountains everywhere, carpeted by greenery. There were fresh air, the rays of the sun magnifying and personifying the magic of our Mother Earth. I was taken down memory lane. A trip down to 2011 August. Growing up, as we all know, is a, is a huge challenge. The first couple of years are so much full of fun, but then we go to school, followed by college, followed by work, followed by marriage, followed by kids, and whatnot. Weird, isn't it? I mean, every year we are told, this year you pass and your entire life is made. Point is, that year never comes. So I remember that year, rainy season, mummy screaming at me, Take, take your entire buckets, put it up in the terrace. It's raining, it's raining. I never understood the point. That year, I could not appear for my pre-boards examination. I had suffered from chickenpox. So there were beads, crusts all over my face, arms, legs, body. Even in areas where scratching got a little difficult. Somehow, I felt my life just stopped. This was the first time I had missed a set of exams in my life. I had worked so hard. I knew that I would score great marks. Yet I was down and out. I didn't even know what to do, what to feel. All I remember that there was this severe chest pain. I was breaking down multiple times. Tears in agony. Mommy tried her best to help me out. Medicines were prescribed by the doctors. They wouldn't really know what to do. I mean, I was not really healing. Finally, mummy came up with her magic mantra. She told me, go get that fresh rainwater. She combined some tulsi, some neem, and that fresh water, rainwater. It did take me a month to heal. But that was the first instance when we realized the power of Mother Nature. We started planting trees in our balcony. Rainwater obviously does the harvesting, the nourishing. And we simply enjoy the fresh oxygen, the magnanimity of Mother Nature and the comfort of our homes. Restoration of the planet begins at home, isn't it? It's weird how Mother Nature works. I mean, do you seriously think that we can restore nature? I mean, we are such tiny beings in this entire cosmos. We can only restore when we are restored ourselves. Here's the magic. Every leaf, every natural resource acts as a medicine, guides us towards healing. 
the simple strategy of being aware, making the most of this blessing is all that we can do. Is all that's going to create wonders. Now, I'm not an environmentalist, I can assure you that, but I sure do know that the environment, Mother Earth, is protecting me and us all, just like a mother would protect her child. Mentioned about rainwater, isn't it? 73% of our body is water. Rainwater is fresh. Now, we were still in that mountain, okay? <laughs> still in that mountain. As we looked up, the, we noticed that the clouds were kissing the top of the fort. We continued our climb in the meanwhile, collecting pieces of junk, pieces of plastic wrappers, soiled newspapers, empty bottles, putting it in our bag. Funny, right? We are in our home and we don't do any kind of cleaning. Yet, when we visit Mother Nature, we are the one who's cleaning every single thing. And nature has its weird ways to teach you lessons. As we were climbing, we noticed that the trees were giving us shelter. The best part, protecting us from the scorching sun. <laughs> Every time we turn back to see, there were all these buildings looking like little toys. The light falling on the buildings. Yet we were protected by the clouds. Trip down memory lane yet again. It was the 16th of April, 2017. I was standing on the floor of my college building holding the railings of an unguarded terrace, overburdened with the expectations of being a good dentist, the first doctor of my entire family history, the pressure of the subjects, every chapter flying over my head, I had finally decided it's time to give up. It's weird how Mother Nature plays with you. The emotional and the mental burnout led to severe astronomer's chest pain. Like I just couldn't... I just couldn't feel it. I felt someone just like hitting my heart with this huge piece of rock. My heart would literally pound and I would literally stop breathing. And that's how anxiety felt for me. I didn't even know because the doctors wouldn't help you. The medicines weren't working. The therapists were charging huge. I decided that evening not to jump. Instead, traced back to my roots. The next morning onwards, as the sun would pierce through the horizon, I would walk to the nearest, nearest ground, take off my shoes and just lie on the grass. Our Mother Earth, the generous Mother Earth, I wouldn't even realize how an entire hour would pass by. All I knew was that I was connected, I was grounded and I was healing. You see, we are all immersed in the challenges that life throws at us, isn't it? The pressure in life, pressure in studies, pressure in living up to the expectations creates this huge emotional burnout. Yet, if you are just patient enough and listen to your body wants, listen to the connection with Mother Nature and just simply place it on the grass or just walk bare feet, that's where the healing happens. I realized as we moved to the mountain, as I slept there in the grass yet again, my friends telling me, come on, Suridhi, we need to go. Come on, come on. I was being grateful that Mother, Restore, Mother Earth was restoring me in the first place. Now, we were about to climb right at the top of the fort. Come back, come back, come back. I want to bring you back to this present moment. We were still climbing and we had one steep climb Right at the top, we had the fort. Now, we were not really sure where was the road. So one of my friends just decided, I'm going to just climb up, run up, only to realize that it's a dead end. Now, we were following him. As we turned back, we realized it was a steep slope downwards. We literally had to wriggle down. My hand slipped. I was about to fall for the first time. I felt like the countdown of my life. I started crying and cursing. I felt like... What kind of a huge mistake did I do to say yes to this trek? I started throwing tantrums, started abusing. This was the first time when I looked at the right and I witnessed there were these groups of people who were chopping off trees. My, my consciousness and my soul wandered back to a very, very recent episode that happened. 
July 2020, this last year. I was still in college and I had been through a horrifying breakup. I don't mind sharing that I was caught cheating on my then girlfriend. I was in, a, I was in such a difficult situation. What's worse, these feelings of pain, regret, guilt, shame, these are your greatest enemies. And every single time I would look at my ex in the college, my lungs would just stop working. I would stop breathing. I would get these severe chest pains yet again. What's worse, the situation had an impact, a severe impact in my personal and professional breakdown. It impacted my life in, in ways I couldn't have even imagined. I would scream at my parents, scream at my friends. I was almost in the position to hurt and beat myself up so bad. Finally, ask and you shall receive. I asked for someone who could just help me out and the universe blessed me with a friend. A friend who was a little psychotic. Look who's talking about psychotic. I was also psychotic. He loved nature. And I noticed that in his house, he had purchased these two bonsai trees. And we literally put up a sticker in each of these two trees. One was named as the positive well-wisher. The other was named as the emotional dustbin. We were very clear. Listen, Suryadeep, every single time something good happens to you, you can share it with a positive well-wish. Every single time something wrong happens to you, just pour out all your emotions, all your anger, all your pain to the emotions dustbin. This happily went on for a month. One evening, we were, we were relishing our pizza when my eyes fell on both the bonsai trees. The emotions dustbin had turned pale. The leaves were withering away. While on the other hand, the positive well-wisher continued to bloom. In fact, she was even shining and glowing at times. That's when it just hit me. Each and every one of us in this planet is broken in some way or the other. And we don't really have anyone to share our problems with. We get judged, we get blamed, we are misinterpreted, we don't really, we're not listened to. And guess what? We don't even know where we ask solutions from. How do we really strategize our healing in these kind of areas? Well, what I have learned in that episode is that you just talk. And who better to talk to than Mother Nature herself? Ever since that incident happened, I made it a point to literally speak to flowers and trees. Literally. Even I would end up singing for them. I would end up dancing with them. And it's super surprising when I'm dancing in front of a tree. Guess what? The tree is also swaying. Tears would roll up my eyes. As I returned back to the consciousness of the calamity, I put myself into, I realized, Suridhi, come back, come back. You're still stuck in the slope. You still have to come down from the mountain. And well, somehow we got down. Somehow we got down. We found another road and we literally reached the top of the fort. But I ended up crying too much. All I did is I jumped right at the topmost point of the fort, closed my eyes, felt the breeze. And for the first time in my life, I said, this is my turn to give back. We are all broken in some way or the other. We are all messed up. We all make mistakes. I just walked you through a, a part of my life. But every single one of you listening to me right now, in some way or the other, will be able to relate with me that it is not just my story. It's in a way your story too. Our greatest teacher is standing right next to us in the form of Mother Nature, Mother Earth, as she healed me through these three different ways, the ways that I throw at you once again. Rainwater drinking, heal my chicken pox miraculously, heal my anxiety too, because water relaxes the body, heals the tsunami in the mind. The grass on the ground, literally walking barefoot or simply lying down, it taught me the whole power of healing the emotional trauma because you are grounded. And as you are grounded, the pain dissipates. Perhaps an even deeper feeling, 
the feeling of forgiveness. I felt forgiven. When we are healed, only then can we heal another soul, isn't it? And finally, talking to a tree. I know it's kind of crazy, but it works like magic because that became my pillar of strength. Even silence has an answer. Even silence is a blessing. You don't need any friend. You already have one. Just find your tree and start talking. As we walked down the fort, super tired, super exhausted, but healed, I made a promise to align myself with the values of Mother Earth. Because when I am healed, I can heal the ones around me. When I am enlightened, I can lighten up others. Kind of like my name, right? Those little shrubs right now in our balcony are my little babies. We pamper them, we love them, they love us back. Let's start restoring our soul towards restoring our planet. Let us all promise to create the next revolution.